Throughout the years of the Second Age, roughly 2 to 3 percent of the population proved capable of channeling Psydi and Sidar, the male and female halves of the One Power, a form of magic derived from the true source, a primordial cosmic energy which turned the Wheel of Time. Called Aes Sedai, meaning servants of all, those trained to channel the One Power, worked for the betterment of mankind, leading to a golden age of peace and prosperity. With the help of these magic users, humanity eliminated hunger, poverty, and homelessness, created advanced technologies, perfected food production, and joined together under a united world government, advised by the Hall of Servants, the governing body where Aes Sedai gathered to make decisions. Varied in their raw potential and abilities, Aes Sedai learned to weave the One Power through elemental magic spells, seeing males excel with fire, earth, and spirit, learning to aggressively take hold of Sidene and forcefully submit it to their will, while females primarily used air, water, and spirit, trained to more passively allow the flow of Sidar to consume them. One of the most important lessons they learned was to know their limits, as wielding too much of the One Power risked self-destruction or burning out and losing their ability to channel. In order to bypass these limitations, Aes Sedai created Angriol, Saw Angriol, and Tear Angriol, magical artifacts which amplified and expanded their skills, allowing channelers to wield more Sidene or Sidar than was naturally possible. Living in an age of legends, their near-utopian civilization began its decline when researchers at the University of Kolum Dawn drilled a small bore through the pattern of reality to reach the True Power, a new source of magical energy which they discovered could be channeled equally by both men and women. Yet they soon learned this wondrous new energy came from the Dark One, Shaitan, who was imprisoned outside the pattern at the moment of creation. And while the boar was not big enough for his escape, it allowed him to directly influence their world, creating a renaissance of greed, anger, jealousy, and violence. Over the next century, humanity grew increasingly susceptible to their evil impulses, leading many to worship the Dark One, lured by promises of immortality and greater prominence in the New World Order. While ordinary humans who turned to the Shadow were known as Friends of the Dark, his greatest servants were the Aes Sedai Defectors, called the Chosen or Forsaken, charged with leading his forces and governing conquered territories. Launching the War of the Shadow, also called the War of Power, a devastating ten-year conflict in which Forsaken sought to release the Dark One from captivity, Shadow armies were greatly augmented by Trollocs and other Shadow Spawn, vicious monsters created and bred for battle. Organizing themselves under the dragon, Luz Theron Telamon, the greatest living Aes Sedai, the forces of light fought back, yet were nonetheless pushed to the brink of defeat because of betrayals, disorganization, low morale, and increased division among their leadership. With a shadow victory fast approaching, Luz Theron Telamon sought to use both Sidene and Sidar to seal the boar with seven Quendiar, while his adversary, the female Aes Sedai Latra Posea de Kume, wanted to use special Terangriol and Sangriol to create a secondary prison around the boar. Though Latra convinced the most powerful female Aes Sedai of the Hall to refrain from aiding Luz Theron, her plan was made impossible when the territory holding the necessary Terangriol was captured by the enemy. With all efforts to retrieve the Terangriol failing, the Shadow forces on the brink of victory and female Aes Sedai unrelenting in their continued opposition, Luz Theron marched on Sheol Ghul, the focal point of the Dark One's power, with 113 of his closest male supporters and an honor guard of 10,000 warriors. Proving doubly successful, Luz Theron sealed the boar, imprisoning both Shaitan and his 13 most powerful Forsaken. However, the Dark One was able to perform a counterstroke, tainting the male half of the One Power with his corruption, causing every surviving wielder of Sidene to lose their sanity with an unyielding desire for chaos, destruction, and violence, resulting in the breaking of the world, three centuries of mass devastation which reshaped lands and seas, only ending when female Aes Sedai finished killing or gentling the last of their male counterparts. As for Luz Theron, he went on to murder his own family in his madness, and upon realizing what he did, killed himself in a massive explosion of Sidene, which created Dragonmount and the island later called Tarvalin. Though the Dark One and Forsaken were gone, the problems faced in sealing the boar meant the threat was not completely eradicated, and so prophecies emerged, including the Corathon Cycle, which foresaw the return of the Shadow as well as the Dragon, reborn in a new body to once again face off against this evil and save the world. 
for a time, some male Aes Sedai sought refuge in steadings, special regions populated by large, thoughtful, peace-loving Ogier. As it was impossible to channel the One Power in a steady, they were protected from the Dark One's corruption. However, these male channelers could not resist the allure of siding forever, and so eventually departed, hoping to discover the taint was gone, but instead inevitably went mad, causing further destruction until Gentler killed. Although female Aes Sedai were unaffected by the taint on Sidene, they nonetheless suffered grievous harm from the breaking, with many killed and others scattered throughout the world. In the western continent of Shan Chan, surviving female Aes Sedai became ruthless despots, conquering independent territories which remained in a near constant state of war over the next 2000 years. Killing any male channelers found, they ruled through lies and treachery, believing honesty and loyalty utter foolishness. Unlike the other regions of the world, male channelers survived in the southern continent named the Land of the Madmen, where they continued to run rampant without restraint. Though their insanity caused significant seismic activity, female channelers were also considered dangerous and unpredictable, never able to unify or organize themselves to the extent necessary to control the males. Lastly, there was the Eastern Continent, divided into four unique regions, with the Northern Mountains of Doom separating the Southern Realms from Sheol Ghul and the Redlands of the Great Blight, where surviving Shadow Spawn lived and organized their attacks against the Realms of Men. Southeast of the Great Blight were the lands of Shara, where channelers left behind the name Aes Sedai to become Ayad, slave-like servants of the united Sharan nation. Though females were forced to live in secluded villages with limited rights and responsibilities, male channelers were simply used as breeding stock until inevitably killed by around the age of 21. Further west, some few surviving female Aes Sedai joined the Genail clan in the desert lands of the Aeo Waste, helping them found the city of Roideon. However, the project was never completed as both the Genail and Aes Sedai died off, leaving the city abandoned for thousands of years. Among the other Aeo clans, female magic users became wise ones, acting as advisors to clan chiefs, while male channelers were sent north to die fighting the Dark One. In order to preserve the knowledge of their ancient connection to the Aes Sedai, clan chiefs and wise ones visited the city of Roideon, where they learned the secret truth about their past. Finally, there were the Westlands, where female channelers retained more unity and authority than any other region of the world, yet in these early years after breaking, they too were plagued with division and strife, as competing factions struggled for power. Despite holding a meeting to discuss unification in 47 AD, war consumed the second half of the first century after breaking, until a single faction emerged victorious, defeating their greatest Aes Sedai rivals, led by Lidine Rajan and Melane Harvold. Uniting under the first Amarlin seat, Elisane Tishar, they founded the city-state of Tarvalin in 98 AB, but did not finish construction until 202 AB, with the White Tower acting as their central stronghold, where they governed held meetings, housed themselves, and trained new Aes Sedai. Refusing to aggressively recruit by testing all women and girls, they instead sought out those who already displayed some measure of skill or potential to channel, preferring those of younger ages as they were more easily trained. Beginning as novices, these young girls divided their days between learning about the One Power and manual labor, working as all manner of servants to teach them humility and test their resolve. Once this stage was complete, novices performed a challenging ritual in which they passed naked through three Terangrial doorways, each showing them alternate versions of their lives, presenting compelling scenarios which they ultimately had to leave by returning through the same doorway, thereby choosing the life of an Aes Sedai over whatever temptation they saw. This test was so difficult and traumatic, novices were given two opportunities to delay starting the ritual. However, if they refused a third time or failed to complete it once began, they were put out of the tower. Should they pass the test, they were given a serpent ring to be worn on the third finger of their left hand and title of accepted, spending their days studying more advanced knowledge and teaching novices. When their time as accepted was over, they took another test with a Terangrial, this time performing a hundred complex weaves with the One Power while remaining composed and free of distractions. If they passed, they were permitted to swear the three oaths of the Aes Sedai upon the Oath Rod, a special Terangrial which forced the speaker to abide by their vows. 
the three oaths forbid Aes Sedai from speaking a lie, making weapons for a man to kill another, or use the one power as a weapon, except against dark friends, shadow spawn, or in the last extreme defense of her life or another of the tower. Once risen to full sisterhood, they could wear the ring on any finger they wished, bond a warder, creating a magical connection with a male warrior to act as their companion, and joined one of seven colored ajas, each of which represented a different aspect of their responsibilities as Aes Sedai. Starting with the Red Aja, they were charged with capturing those who misused the One Power, including women who broke Tower Law, and any man that channeled or falsely declared himself the Dragon Reborn. The Green, or Battle Aja, were warrior Aes Sedai, who bonded as many warders as they wished, and sometimes married one. The Grey Aja focused on diplomacy and mediation, while the Browns preserved knowledge, acting as librarians and bookkeepers. Then there were the Yellow Aja, comprised of healers, the Blue Aja, devoted to justice, and the White Aja, which studied philosophy. Developing a strict hierarchy among fully-fledged sisters, the Amarlin seat held the highest place, followed by those in positions of prominence, like the Keeper of the Chronicles, acting as an assistant and advisor to their leader, as well as the Mistress of Novices, responsible for overseeing novice training and punishing those who broke their rules. Then there were the Sitters, three women from each Aja, who sat on the ruling council called the Hall of the Tower, voting on important issues and policies including the election of the Amarlin seat. There were also the Aja heads, each of whom led their faction following individual customs and traditions, which differed greatly between the Ajas. Aside from these women in positions of authority, Aes Sedai were ranked firstly by their level of power and then by age, with less skilled and younger channelers expected to defer to the more powerful and older sisters among them. Though most of the powerful channelers in the Westlands either killed themselves or ended up in the White Tower for training, some few escaped notice from the Aes Sedai long enough to become wilders, surviving the initial dangers on their own while learning some measure of self-control. As for those less powerful channelers who were not discovered by the tower or else went for training but failed to become full Aes Sedai, they sometimes formed independent groups like the Daughters of Silence or Kinswomen. Yet Tarvalin would not allow a rival order of magic users to form in the Westlands and so either destroyed these organizations or used them to serve their own interests. Though the Aes Sedai of Tarvalin wielded great influence in the Westlands, acting as a powerful realm while also providing advisors, diplomats, and occasionally warriors to surrounding nations, many of their most impressive talents from the Age of Legends were lost over time, including the ability to travel instantly from one place to another, fly through the air, freely enter the world of dreams, and the creation of Angriol, Songriol, and Terangriol. Nevertheless, they continued to be a formidable organization capable of extraordinary feats, including their capacity to capture and kill or gentle male channelers of the One Power, especially those who raised armies by falsely declaring themselves the Dragon Reborn. While not every false dragon was capable of wielding Psydee, there were those who did, such as Rowlin Darkspain, Urien Stonebow, Davian, Guerra Malasan, and Loghain, some of whose followers launched failed attacks against Tarvalin itself in order to rescue their captured leaders. Despite claiming to serve humanity and do what was best for the nations of the Westland, Aes Sedai gained a reputation for deception and self-interest, as they found ways around the First Oath to give false information and often did what was best for themselves or the White Tower. One of the most heinous examples of an Aes Sedai abuse of power came during the Trollic Wars fought a thousand years after breaking when Tetsuan of the Red Aja was raised to Amarlin's seat. A time of great turmoil, many nations fell to the shadow spawn under their leader Baal Zaman, who created the secretive, dark one worshipping Black Aja to infiltrate the White Tower and raised Dreadlord Channelers to lead his armies in an invasion of the South. Yet one of the most tragic tales of this era emerged from the fall of Menetherin, ruled by the noble King Aemon, who left his own realm vulnerable because he sent troops to help neighboring powers. When the war at last reached his kingdom, he sent word to his allies and the White Tower for aid, yet the Amarlin seat was a longtime rival and enemy of King Aemon's Aes Sedai wife, Queen Eldreen, and so out of personal spite, delayed and prevented help from reaching Menetherin. As a result, King Aemon died fighting a courageous last stand against the Trollic invaders, which then caused his wife to go mad with grief, destroying herself, the enemy army, and their own capital city in a massive explosion of Sidar energy. 
When the other Aes Sedai learned what their leader did, they deposed Tetsuan and severed her connection to the One Power through a method called stilling, leaving her a miserable wretch, condemned to serve as a scullery maid until she died three years later. The first Amarlin seat to be stilled, she became a lesson to all Aes Sedai that no one was above Tower Law. While the Trollic Wars devastated much of the continent, including Tarvalin, which suffered heavy losses during an attack against the city itself in 1290 AB, the nations of the West at last won the critical Battle of Mergande in 1301 AB, with the new Amarlin seat, Rashima Karanmosa, killed in the fighting, taking out nine dreadlords before falling. A few centuries later, the Aes Sedai once again demonstrated their resolve by deposing Queen Sulmara of Masenashar to make her a servant in the White Tower. Though some claim she was an Aes Sedai who became queen of her homeland without permission, others say she was simply a ruler who needed a lesson in humility. After defeating Guerra Malasan in 943 FY during the War of the Second Dragon, the legendary king Arthur Hawkwind parted on bad terms with the Amarlin Seat, Bonwin Maragdin, despite him saving Tarvalin from an attack of a hundred thousand men trying to free the false dragon. Seeking his utter ruin, the Amarlin Seat abused her power by encouraging other nations to attack Hawkwing's homeland of Shandale. Yet the man was such an incredible warrior and general, he defeated every invasion, proving so successful his counterattacks allowed him to conquer and unite all of the Westlands save Tarvalin. Despite his animosity with the Amarlin Seat, Hawkwing did not know with certainty the full measure of her conspiracy against him, and so allowed Aes Sedai to join his government, serving in positions of authority. However, everything changed when his advisor, Jalwin Morad, convinced him to turn against the Aes Sedai, expelling them from his court and laying siege to Tarvalin. When the Sisters of the White Tower discovered the crimes of the Amarlin Seat, she was deposed, stilled, and left a servant until dying four years later. But this was not enough to appease Arthur Hawkwing, and so the siege continued. In 994 FY, a year after suffering a terrible fire in the library of the White Tower, Arthur Hawkwing died and his empire collapsed into the War of the Hundred Years, which meant an end to the siege against Tarvalin while would-be rulers fought to carve out their own independent territories. When the war at last ended, 24 nations and three independent city-states took the place of the former empire, each of which developed their own attitude and relationship with the White Tower of Tarvalin. Becoming allies to the White Tower, Aes Sedai served as advisors to Andor and Kyrian, though their ties were considerably closer to the ruling queens of Andor, establishing a tradition where the female heir studied in the White Tower before inheriting the throne. Oppositely, the nation of Amadisia, home to the Children of the Light, an independent military organization dedicated to fighting the Dark One, hated the Aes Sedai of Tarvalin, as they associated the use of the One Power with the Shadow. A weak ruler on the throne, the Children of the Light were the true power in Amadisia, making it the only nation where Aes Sedai and channeling were entirely outlawed. In the year 306 of the New Era, the Children even managed to kill the Amarlin Seat, Serenia Latar, before hanging her dead body for all to see. In other regions, like the northern borderlands, Aes Sedai were honored and respected, while the southern realms like Tyr barely tolerated their presence. In 601 NE, the Amarlin seat, Xi'an Chunla, was deposed and exiled due to extreme opposition from the Hall of the Tower, and was assassinated 50 years later when the Aes Sedai learned of a plot seeking to restore her power. In 794 NE, the independent channeling organization, the Daughters of Silence, was founded, but only a few years later in 798 was discovered and destroyed, with their women absorbed into the tower, where only one among them proved capable of becoming a full sister. In 890 NE, the powerful Aes Sedai, Cad Swain Malydrin, fled from the White Tower, entering into a decade of self-imposed exile to avoid being elected as Amarlin's seat. During the Aiel War, from 976 to 978 NE, the nations of the Westlands gathered at Tarvalin to fight a final battle against the Aiel invaders of the East, who sought to kill King Laman Damodred of Kyrian. When the king was dead, the Aiel withdrew, thereby making it seem like the West was victorious. Yet in spite of this tumultuous battle and the death of a king, a far more momentous event occurred nearby in the White Tower when the Keeper of the Chronicles, Guitar Moroso, had a sudden vision proclaiming the dragon was reborn before dying from the shock of this revelation. The only witnesses were the Amarlin Seat, Tamra Ospeña, and the accepted Moiraine Damodred and Swain Sanche who were sworn to secrecy. 
two decades later in 997 NE, with Swain Sanche serving as Amarlin's seat. Moiraen Damadrid set out to the Two Rivers region of Andor, seeking the Dragon Reborn. By the year 997 NE, the power of Tarvalin was drastically reduced, with only about a thousand Aes Sedai serving the White Tower. Nevertheless, they played a crucial role in the rise of the Dragon Reborn, suffering much hardship during these years, as they were infiltrated and sabotaged by the Black Aja, leading to rebellion and civil war among the sisters. Though there were two competing Amarlin seats for a time, they eventually reunified under the rebel Amarlin, Egwene Alvir, who enacted a more aggressive recruitment policy, testing any woman who wished it, thereby greatly bolstering their numbers. United under this young, powerful Amarlin seat, the White Tower fought with the armies of the Dragon Reborn in the final battle of Tarman Gaiden, contributing greatly to their ultimate victory and salvation of the world. Love The Wheel of Time or any other series? Then why not check out Audible, where they have the largest collection of audiobooks available. Sign up through the links below for regular membership and get a 30-day free trial, or else try Premium Plus for a 60-day trial and up to three free audiobooks. For those who prefer to read their stories, there is the Kindle Unlimited plan, where you get as many ebooks as you wish. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson, narrated by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding, along with the prequel novel and history book. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Rick Lohm, Delacruz the Freed, Sir Xavier, Defender of the Flame, and Kyle Blitzsword. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.